um, are braking while it's going down the hill. I had to actually turn my cruise control down. Or your cruise control is just terrible. I don't know. Or you don't have it. I know that some cars don't. I've turned my cruise control off. Let's do some rev matching. Let's even do some heel and toe. Right, here we go. My foot's on the brake. And down to second. Yeah! It wasn't the smoothest thing in the world. Like a paddle shifter would do it better. But mm, it's rev matching and other things like that. And heel and toe is so satisfying in this thick shift car. So here's my perspective on transmissions and cars. At the top of my list, my favorite kind is sequential. So things from Hollinger. Um, something that you put into a car. Um, basically the way it works is that you, it's, a, it's, a, it's a transmission where you push up and that goes down a gear. And if you pull back, it goes up a gear. And you can tune it so that it doesn't need the clutch to do gear changes, but you still need the clutch to start and stop because otherwise the car will inevitably stall. But the way it works with Hollinger is you can tune it so that it cuts the engine timing, but it doesn't cut the fuel so that you have good throttle response and things like that. And the gear changes will be fast and you can still enjoy changing gears with a stick instead of with paddles. And you can still have fun with the clutch starting and stopping and launching it and things like that. Or if you're drifting, for instance, a lot of people like to use sequentials when they're drifting. Um, then after that, it's kind of hard to decide whether I like a six speed manual or paddle shifters because it depends on why I'm driving the car. If I'm driving the car to be fast, um, in all cases, um, if I wanted to be absolutely as fast as possible and get that extra 3% of performance, I'd want the paddle shifters and I wouldn't apologize about it whatsoever. But if I wanted to have fun and cruise around and feel cool and have a good time and be proud of the way I'm doing it and feel like I'm in control, as some people like to argue, um, I would want to have the six speed. Um, with the, the clutch manual and having to use the clutch for all the gear changes, which I'm capable of doing, so I have no problem with it. Um, but the sequential is at the top because like, it's a best of both worlds. You can have fun with the clutch and feel like you're in control, but the sequential um, makes up for the, the speed of any upshifts and downshifts. And the nice thing about downshifting in a, in a sequential is that you can set it up to rev match automatically by itself. Um, so you can have your foot on the brake and not have to worry about heel and toe and all your, and you can do a downshift through a corner whilst also braking and the balance of the car will be fine, which I think is very cool. And to be frank, when you start getting up to super high horsepower cars, I mean, sure, there are people out there that can do a thousand, 2000 horsepower in a, a like a, a six speed manual and I commend them, but that's a lot harder. Uh, sequential or even paddle shifters. Paddle shifters are obviously much better. Um, or even an automatic, obviously, but that's not even going to be on my list because I like to be able to change gears and choose what, what gears I'm using. Um, you know, it's just going to be much faster. I don't know what the heck is behind me. An old Mustang, maybe? The hood looks a little... It's hard to tell because the hood looks funny. Are there any cops nearby? The Panda Express I'm going to work at is over there. Well... I say going to, I don't want to jinx it and say that and then not get the job. Ugh. Well, third gear just grinded anyways. I don't know why. So obviously that's the thing is what I was saying before. There might be something wrong with the transmission and something wrong with the way I'm driving. And also those gear changes weren't that smooth, so the car did shake a little bit. Oh, what am I... Oh, I'm hearing the Audi. I'm like, what am I hearing? Huh, <sighs> well this was nice. It's nice to just drive around for fun. Obviously it's nice to drive to places you have to go to. But, like, it's nice to just drive around for fun and just see where the road takes you. I don't want to sound too poetic or like a Fast and the Furious quote, but, hey, sometimes you just can't avoid it. Sometimes it's true. I'm going to be British and pull up my e-brake. Did you know that it's actually required in the UK, um, whenever you come to a stop, that you have to put on your parking brake or your e-brake to keep the car from rolling? And so, like, during the driver's test, when you're taking the test, you have to pull on the e-brake. Which, hey, I'll be honest, 
it might seem silly to us, but it's not, it's not dumb. It doesn't cause any harm. And if you're used to it, it's not going to mess up your driving in any way. I saw that WRX yesterday. Did you guys see that? It was a white Hawkeye WRX. An STI. At least I would assume. <laughs> the thing about WRXs of old is that they have the EJ platform. So they all, all, they all sound the same. They all have the Subaru Rumble. Even the WRXs have, like, sound like an STI. So... Um, that could have been a fake, but I, I doubt it was because a, a Hawkeye WRX STI isn't as expensive as even a WRX from this model year or even the last one. But they do depreciate pretty quickly, at least compared to some other cars. I wouldn't say they depreciate a lot, but they do depreciate to the point where after like maybe four or five years, the car can become affordable. Cut. Oh, my glasses beat. I don't know why. They're still recording. Well, that's fine. Um, in case the batteries are getting low or something is going wrong, we're about to uh, head back in anyways. But yeah, I just wanted to give these glasses one more try. Um, let, me get, let me know if you guys want me to try the headrest mount. It might turn out to be a really good idea. Another thing is, um, what do you guys want me to talk about in these videos? Do you want me to start telling other stories about bad tickets? Like, I could go online and look up craziest or stupidest, like driving ticket stories and stuff like that or parking tickets even you know like if you guys want me to do that and just talk about a bunch of those because that could be a neat thing to, to talk about maybe make that like make a few motor madness episodes about that hello officer Doop doop, doop doop doop, ba -da -ba 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 -da -ba -da. The old bamboo, the old bamboo, the old bamboo. Menu available commands are Ooh. what? Bamboo. What? What? Dial by number. What? what? Dial. Call back. I press phone book. At call cannot be placed. Please oh. check the phone. Available commands. Shut up. Are what dial the? Dial by name. Dial by number. I don't know what just happened. I've never done that before. I pressed the call button, I think, as I was turning the steering wheel. All right. Hey, the garage door opened on the first time I pressed the button. I need to film myself driving more often because that only ever happens on camera. I usually have to press it a million times. Let's also roll down the window. It's for the, for the revving of the engine. Oh, yes. Well, thank you guys so much for watching these last few episodes of Motor Madness. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, please give me your feedback down below. Let me know if you liked it with a like and a comment. And if you want to see more and you are new, hit the subscribe button. And uh, yeah, all the other usual shameless self-promotion on YouTube. All that good stuff. Um, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you all in future videos. I am Tom, the Racing Joker, signing out. See you later.